Chris Hyaski from South Texas, about 90 miles southwest of Houston, farm along the coast here. Uh, we grow a lot of corn, soybeans, grain sorghum, and cotton. I've uh, been farming all my life. I've started driving a tractor when I was eight years old. It's kind of in my blood. I've been driving a combine since I was 12. It's what I've loved to do all my life, and basically that's what I live for. I live to, live to grow a crop and love to harvest, and so I've done this for a long time, and it's something I continue to look forward to do the rest of my life. I enjoy farming. I like trying new things. I like trying to make better corn yields. It's something that's a passion of mine. I and mean, we always look at trying to make more corn, make more corn, but on the flip side is when you make the corn and you leave it in the, on the ground. Here in South Texas, we farm corn, we harvest between, you know, the elevator won't take it over 16% moisture. I mean, ideally we're harvesting corn 14, 15%. The problem is by the time we get to the end of the acres we're trying to cover, corn's at 11 to 12%. I got tired of watching the corn fall out the front of the head and never even make it into the combine. At the feeder house, we had issues of uh, the feeder house hitting ears that are, you know, 11, 12% moisture, just watching the corn shell out between the deck plates. The next thing we looked at was we're fighting volunteer corn down in South Texas. In South Texas, we, we finished harvesting about August 1st and basically never get a free, so our ground grows Volunteer corn will grow all the way up until December, usually until we get a frost. And we've had to spend extra trips cleaning up ground, whether it's spraying, tillage, or whatever we do to clean that up. So that was kind of one of the reasons we looked at the 360 yield savers was just a, a product to really kind of keep the combine, keep the corn in the combine and not on the ground. And so we started looking at them, did some testing last year. We had a, took a 612C, 38 inch row head, and put uh, six rows on the right hand side and six rows with just the regular chains and started running. As we started harvesting you could definitely see a little bit of difference when the corn was 14 and 15 percent moisture but as it got down to 12 percent moisture I felt like we were losing anywhere from four to six, seven, eight, maybe eight bushels an acre through the regular deck plates with no yield savers and where the yield savers were running was a huge difference. Riding in the combine looking out one side versus having them and not having them, we definitely have seen a difference with the yield savers. And it's something that at this year we actually purchased, set, put them on a 12 row head and a running 12 rows worth. And it's been really nice to look out both sides of the head now, both sides of the combine and not see those kernels falling on the ground, especially the ones that are bouncing out of the feeder house and those yield savers right there on those center two rows are catching. That's kind of the, my opinion, the uh, icing on the cake there. You can capitalize on a few uh, kernels there as well. So one thing I like about the yield savers is as you're driving the combine, you get to see the return on your investment right there in front of you. Look out one side of the combine where there's behind yield savers versus where there's not. It doesn't take very long to start calculating kernels and figure out how many bushels we're saving. And then to go back two months after we harvest and look at the pictures of where the, vol where the volunteer corn is three times more, four times more. That's that much less work we have to do later in the fall in order to get our fields cleaned up. So we're not only saving money, making more bushels, we're also a lot less headaches later in the year. The biggest adjustment when running the 360 yield savers was getting used to running the deck plates water. It was something I was very uncomfortable with and it's kind of a backwards logic. You widen the deck plates out to get less header loss. And that's something that I've been visiting with some of the guys at 360 yield. That's what I had to do. We were building up a little bit of residue on top of the head. And he said, we gotta widen your deck plates out. I said, well, if you widen your deck plates out, how are the nubbin's gonna hold? Well, when it was all said and done, widening the deck plates out, lessened the residue on top of the head, and it did exactly what you know it, the 360 yield savers were designed to do. It created uh, basically more uh, kernels going into the head and less on the ground, even though it's not the logic that I was used to. That was kind of one of the struggles I had was is widening that thing out to wider than I've ever gone before. And so once I got comfortable with that concept, it's worked really good. When you can keep anything in the combine, even if it's one or two bushels, it makes a difference. Being that I drive the combine pretty much over every acre, it's nice not to see yellow corn painted on the ground, and that's my biggest deal. The overall is I'm pleased with what we've done and look forward to using them some more in the future.